surgeon, when I asked how big your tumor was, held forth his substantial feet, held forth his substantial fist with its globed class ring. Home again, we live as charily as strangers. Things are raw, touch rankles, food is not good. Even the kindness of friends turns burdensome. Their flowers sadden us, so many and so fair. I woke in the night to see your diminished bulk lying beside me, you on your back, like a sarcophagus as your feet held up the covers. The things you might need in the next life surrounded you, your comb and glasses, water, a book, and a pen. She said, uh, is it all right, Perkins? And I said, well, it's a little weird, but it's a wonderful point. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, one I would read you now is one that she wrote while she was sick, she was getting better. Uh, and uh, she had had a bone marrow transplant and uh, uh, the uh, new marrow had uh, taken and we were hoping for the best. But she was still very sick and would have been for quite a while. We had to go up to the hospital an hour away from us uh, several times a week to get a blood test at each time. One time on the way back, I stopped at the supermarket to pick up something uh, to feed us with. And uh, the next day, I left her for almost the first time in 15 months. Uh, my son and I watched basketball together. We hadn't for a long time. Jane was getting better. So I went down to watch the Boston Celtics with him and uh, our neighbor stayed with Jane. When I came back, Jane was in bed and the neighbor left. And beside my chair, or the chair which she had been sitting in, I found a piece of paper with some lines on it that were clearly by Jane, but the handwriting was wrong. She could not hold a pen because cyclosporin, which is an anti-rejection drug, disabled her fingers. And for over the next week or two, before she began to get sick again, every now and then she would look at it and say, change X to Y, change this, break the line there. And then when we knew she was dying, and we were putting together her selected poems, uh, I asked her if I could uh, print this one, if I could figure out some way to say it was an unfinished poem. I knew she would have made it better in time. It's called The Sick Wife, and the only one she wrote during her illness. <clears throat> the sick wife stayed in the car while he bought a few groceries. Not yet 50, she had learned what it's like not to be able to button a button. It was the middle of the day, and so only mothers with small children or retired couples stepped through the muddy parking lot. Dry cleaning swung and gleamed on hangers in the cars of the prosperous. How easily they moved with such freedom, even the old and relatively infirm. The windows began to steam up. The cars on either side of her pulled away so briskly that it made her sick at heart. When Jane uh, was diagnosed with leukemia, uh, January 30th, uh, 1994, uh, it was while I was away, and she was taken up to the hospital, but I found about it right away and joined her in her room. And I remember my attitude, and I think hers at that moment, uh, was not uh, so morbid as we usually were, but was, look what, uh, look what a mess we've got ourselves into now. Uh, one more thing to conquer, and so on. And another thought that we had constantly was that I couldn't take care of her because I'll be getting sick and dying myself. When I sat beside her uh, for 15 months, largely every day, uh, 
well, every day. Uh, first in New Hampshire, and then in Seattle, where she had her bone marrow transplant. I really couldn't read uh, much of any. I couldn't concentrate. And uh, I, uh, I did a little writing for a, a children's book that had been uh, uh, commissioned. And I wrote about her. And uh, what was going through day by day, went, uh, little short poems. And I probably wrote 150 or so and published, uh, I don't know how many, 30 in, in without. I'm just going to read you a few of those today. These are poems from, uh, oh, I called it a long illness. It was always a uh, uh, statement in obituaries, died after a long illness. Uh, at least it used to be. That always meant it, it was cancer. Uh, the uh, first one I'll read comes from the beginning of the first remission, which just took about four weeks. Uh, but uh, we, the protocol for her type of leukemia was, uh, oh, uh, more than a year. And uh, we knew this was just the beginning. Daybreak until nightfall, he sat by his wife at the hospital while chemotherapy dripped through the catheter into her heart. He drank coffee and read the globe. He paced, he worked on poems. He rubbed her back and read aloud. Overcome with dread, they wept and affirmed their love for each other, witnessly over and over again. When it snowed one morning, Jane gazed at the darkness blurred with flakes. They pushed the IV pump, which she called Iger, slowly past the nurse's pads, as far as the outside door, so that she could smell the snowy air. I originally uh, wrote I and Jane, but uh, it looked like a forest of palm trees, all those uh, capital I's all the time. Someone to whom I'd shown the manuscript suggested I change it to he, it's I elsewhere. He hovered beside Jane's bed, solicitous. What can I do? It must have been unbearable while she suffered her private hurts, to see his worried face looming above her, always anxious to do something when there was exactly nothing to do. Inside him, some four-year-old understood that if he was good, thoughtful, considerate, beyond reproach, perfect, she would not leave him. Oh, you actually heard part of this, so I'll read it to you anyway. Uh, getting the bone marrow transplant, uh, Jane was put in isolation from me so that we could see each other through thick plastic, uh, and, uh, uh, but not touch each other. Uh, this was because she was particularly prone to infection. And uh, here we go. To enter her antibiotic cube, it took him 15 minutes to suit up, wearing a wide paper hat, a yellow mask, long white booties like a Dallas cowgirl, blue paper surgical gown, and sterile latex gloves. Jane said he looked like a huge condom. I know Don, in his good introduction, told you that. So I want to tell you again. When uh, two, two months after uh, she was uh, allowed to come home from Seattle to New Hampshire, uh, we uh, found out that uh, the leukemia had returned uh, and uh, there was nothing to do about it now. And she lived for 11 days. 
while we were still out in Seattle.